A few weeks ago, I made a video on meme coins, in particular a cryptocurrency named Flocky Inu, and how the world of investing has changed over the last couple of years. I explained how much easier investing had become in 2021, as there's much less of a need for the type of analysis that people used to do in the past. The trick today is to invest in things that seem funny and then hope that Elon Musk will tweet about them. This approach is what Matt Levine at Bloomberg calls the Elon Markets Hypothesis. Now, it's not being taught at business schools quite yet. It's the kind of cutting edge financial theory that's really only available on YouTube. There are, of course, boomers out there who don't understand this, and lots of people in my comment section even accused me of being a boomer who doesn't understand how things work, even though I had just made an entire video explaining it. Of course, I do kind of understand how these people were confused, because I obviously posted my video here on YouTube rather than on TikTok, and it was over 30 seconds long, and frankly, who has time for that? But look, Here's an example of a crypto that's called Omicron, which rose more than 900% over the weekend, because there's now also a COVID variant called Omicron. There's already some crypto cork sniffer down in the comments section writing, don't make fun of the Omicron crypto, you clearly don't understand its use case. Wake up, it didn't rise 900% because over the weekend people suddenly noticed something useful about it. It rose in price because it's funny. That's how markets work and stop overcomplicating things. Anyone who paid attention to my earlier video would have cut the majority of that move. Anyhow, a viewer just yesterday contacted me to show me how some old-fashioned investors might actually be catching up with the times. They sent me a link to a letter sent by an activist investor to Jeffrey Jeanette, the CEO of the department store Macy's. You know Macy's, it's the department store where you might go if you were trying to buy a suit with an elasticated waistband. So to give you some background on activist investing and what activist investors are, they're a type of investor, they've been around for quite a while. They're typically big investors who take a position in a company's stock with the goal of changing the way the companies run. So for example, an activist investor might want to oust a company CEO uh, to close down stores or to streamline the entire business model. They make these changes with the goal of boosting the stock price. Activists typically target companies that are underperforming relative to their industry, and due to their often aggressive attitude towards management and their hostile approaches to short-term profit making, uh, they're often seen by the press as being corporate raiders, green mailers, or asset strippers. Some of the better known activist investors are people like Bill Aikman, Carl Icahn, David Einhorn, and Dan Loeb. Now, a few years ago, some of the better known activist investors busied themselves with putting together PowerPoint presentations that were hundreds of pages long that laid out the case for change within a given company. Often the activism would involve trying to convince the company to change something about their way of doing business. Other times they might be pitching that the government get involved to crack down on a company like Herbalife. A lot of the time the focus was on financial engineering, telling the company to make certain changes to its corporate structure to reduce taxes, for example. Now, one of my favorite examples was from back in 2014, when a company named Starboard Value presented an almost 300-page PowerPoint deck on how the Olive Garden restaurant chain needed to change. There was a slide on how they needed to change their breadstick policy to reduce food waste, a slide on how they used non-standard drinking straws, which then required a custom run from suppliers. There was a whole section which included photos on how the food looks like garbage. It wouldn't be a true activist investor presentation, of course, if there wasn't a populist element. So in this slide, Starboard attacks the company for its wastefully luxurious corporate offices, and this one suggests that the restaurant managers be paid more. There was even a section on how Olive Garden had stopped putting salt in their pasta water in order to get an extended warranty on their cooking pots. These guys had done their research. 
Starboard Value eventually pulled off their shareholder coup and made major changes at Olive Garden. They simplified the menu, they added those awful tabletop tablets and invested in the takeout business. They decided against salting the pasta water. Apparently, it does ruin the pots. But anyhow, the stock price rose 48% after the changes were made. Now, this is, of course, a totally out of date example. I'm just telling you about it so you know how things used to work. Obviously, as I said earlier, investors today demand different things. Today, it's fine if a restaurant's food looks like garbage, as long as the company CEO is willing to reveal that he's not wearing pants in a YouTube interview, like Adam Aran of AMC did a few months ago. This has become common knowledge. In this clip, you can see Kevin O'Leary trying to appear relevant to a youth audience. Now, either you believe in cryptocurrencies and you do believe in what an NFT is, or you don't. I'll tell you, I am not looking forward to the presidential debates in 2024, but that's a different topic. So anyhow, here is the activist letter in question from New Orion Advisors to the chairman and CEO of Macy's. The letter starts out by requesting that the board of directors give immediate consideration to a proposed path to unlock the full value of Macy's digital business. I won't lie, it's already a bit boring and old fashioned, but then we get to the suggestions. They suggest that Macy's should form partnerships with EV car companies, e.g. Tesla Lucid or Rivian to showcase their products on the ground floor of Macy's 100 top landmark stores. Note that they suggested specific EV companies, Tesla, Lucid and Rivian. It would obviously be a disaster if they were to showcase the Nissan Leaf and the Mustang Mach-E next to a display of elasticated waistband suits. If Macy's is going to become a meme stock, they need to order the first thousand cyber trucks. You and I both know this. Other people don't get it yet. All EVs are obviously not the same. Next up, New Orion suggests that Macy's build an EV charging network. Basically, they could be like Bucky's, but for EVs. They say in their letter, we believe that direct association with EV companies will drive enormous traffic to Macy's stores. Once again, I would add, not all EVs. Then they go on to suggest that Macy should announce immediately that they're partnering with various crypto platforms to allow digital payments. They don't say which cryptocurrencies. Obviously, it should be a dog-themed coin. Anything else would just be dumb. Now, just to be clear, while this advice generally does make sense, as they're essentially pushing the CEO to understand the new world and to make some effort to become a meme stock, Old-fashioned investors will still argue that a fundamental change within a business might add greater value. But I think we all know that the CEO doing something dumb is much more likely to boost the stock price today. Unfortunately, I'm not able to wholeheartedly agree with the new Orion strategy. Frankly, it's just way too conservative and a bit of a cliché. While it might have worked in early 2021, the year's nearly over and I'm not sure that associating yourself with EVs and doggy coin will cut it in 2022's more competitive meme stock environment. This letter was written by finance guys who are unfortunately still a bit old fashioned, but at least they're trying. Look, as we've just established, Kevin O'Leary, a man who up until recently has been wearing a red pocket square in order to be edgy, is already appearing on YouTube with no pants on and talking about NFTs. And frankly, no one cares. In fact, you probably just learned about it in this video. It's not exactly getting headlines. Look, here's another example. This is a photo of David Cameron and a pig. And probably less than 10% of you even know why that's funny. And that just illustrates how fast the news cycle moves nowadays. And while Macy should definitely put out a press release about electric cars and crypto, we have to realize that that's just the bare minimum. There's no doubt that in order to truly unlock the full value of Macy's digital business, its management are going to have to go a bit further to stand out. 
In fact, please feel free to share your suggestions in the comments section, because at some point I'll have to update my corporate finance textbook, and I might need to rely on some of your suggestions of the modern methods for unlocking value in a stock. Look, some of you are going to tell me that this is all just dumb, but maybe you're just out of date. Look, if I own shares in Macy's right now, I'd be putting pressure on the CEO to book the next SpaceX flight that he can get himself on, and he should probably bring that doggy coin dog with him into orbit. If such an announcement does turn up in Macy's SEC filings, you should probably buy some short dated out of the money call options because it's going to the moon. Now, if you missed my earlier video where I explained the new rules of finance, here's a link. See you guys later. Bye.